I now call to, call to order the December 2nd, 2020 meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, you wanna do the roll call? Yes, um, Margaret Clemens. Bernie Garitas. Here. William Hosea. Here. Mary Beth Kasparchuk. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Here. Uh, we have four members in a quorum. All right. Uh, introduction of the evidence. Uh, I request that the following items be introduced as evidence for tonight's meeting. The Royal County Conference Plan is adopted and amended. Royal County Zoning Ordinance is adopted and amended. Royal County Subdivision Ordinance is adopted and amended. And the rules of procedure of the Board of Zoning Appeals in Monroe County, as well as the cases advertised and docketed for hearing on tonight's agenda. I move that we uh, approve the agenda as uh, printed and listed by Mr. Wilson. I second that motion. Okay, I will call the roll on the approval of the introduction of evidence. Uh, Bernie Garitas. Bernie, you're muted. Yeah, I was changing screens. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Hey, William Hosea. Yes. Mary Beth Kinsmarchek. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Okay, the uh, evidence has been approved uh, for introduction. Okay, first up we have, oh, that's been continued. Okay, next up we have old business, Souders side yard setback variants ch from chapter 804. And that is Tammy. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, so I think I was not in attendance last month, but I also think maybe two members were also not in attendance. So um, is it advised that I do a full staff report or a staff presentation of this site, Larry? Is that just to get everyone up to speed? Uh, yeah. Be good. Okay. So. All right, so this is the um, petition number 2009-VAR-69. It's the Souders um, side yard setback variants. There's a, a summary here is that um, an after the fact building permit was submitted for a seven by 21 lean to on a garage. And the side yard setback for this zone here, which is suburban residential is five feet and a survey proved that this lean to encroaches four and a half feet into the setback. So it's basically six inches off the line and uh, they're asking for the variance so that the lean to can remain in place. And it looks like Margaret just arrived by the way. I see that in the chat. All right, so it is located at 1750 East Vera Drive in Perry Township. Section 27, it is zoned suburban residential. And the comprehensive plan is rural residential. And these are the current site plans. It has an existing home, a detached garage, and a pre-existing non-conforming shed at the southern end of the property. And this shed actually is within an easement, but it's been there pre-1997. So we're just gonna kind of ignore that one. Uh, the top picture shows one of the survey stakes. They were out there when staff visited. And uh, this is the Western property line that we're mostly gonna be looking at. Uh, the bottom picture is a picture of the lean-to that was put on sometime between 2011 and 2014. And it is six inches off the line. Uh, the adjacent house is the neighbor to the West. And it appears that they are meeting their five foot setback. So basically there is five and a half foot space between these two houses where normally in this zone, we would expect to see 10 feet of space between them. 
um, top picture just uh, facing north and showing that, you know, this uh, structure in, pro in proximity to the lot line. And the fence that's in the foreground here is on the petitioner's site. It does show up in the survey. So, and it is a little bit like offset. So it's why they don't perfectly line up. And then the bottom picture is a 2006 aerial where we see that there is not the, well, there's not part of the garage actually and the lean-to and the house um, as well is missing an addition. And then in the next, we see a series of arrows. These are all uh, were added sometime between 2011, 2014. The petitioner is seeking after the fact permits for all of these uh, parts of structures here in the garage addition, the homes covered porch, and then the red arrow, which is the one item that cannot meet all design standards, which is the seven by 21 lean to. And then we just have an aerial view of the kind of the character of the area. I did kind of look at that and it appears that most everybody's meeting their setbacks in the area. I included the petitioner's letter and also the petitioner's site plan. And I highlighted in yellow, you know, just the seven by 21 structure that he's requesting. And then we get into the survey that was submitted. Um, I believe it was done this summer, maybe sometime in June. I cannot see the date at this point, but I, it was, it's a current recent one. Uh, and I kind of uh, enlarged it there at the bottom right corner and highlighted uh, where it's documenting that the existing garage is 0.5 feet east of the line. And I also note that um, six foot tall board fence and it has shown 1.5 uh, feet east of the line. And that's why you see that like in that one picture where they, where they don't line up. Uh, so just to clarify that the survey did capture this. And then the plat I just included as well, just a good documentation of the dimensions and the easement that's to the south. This easement does not impact um, the structure that they're requesting uh, this variance for. So there are no easements shown in the side yard of this petition site. So the recommended motion for 2009-VAR-69 uh, is to deny the side yard setback variance, design standards variance, um, based on the findings of fact and specifically finding B1 and finding C. Um, I think part of the reason why staff also came to this conclusion is just, just you know, should there be an emergency in the backyard? Um, be difficult to get emergency vehicles through there I'm honestly not sure about fire code. Uh, no information was provided uh, regarding that. But if you have you know, this lean to next to the home and being five and a half feet you know, of distance between them, that's one that I wasn't as um, sure about as well. So kind of from a safety standpoint and you know, practical difficulties. Whoa. All right. Does anyone have any questions other than the dog? <laughs> the dog wants you to know that his daddy's home. I'm going to move it. <laughs> are the setbacks in Dogwood Estates, are they side yard setbacks? Are they consistently five feet regardless of the number of stories or is it just a straight five foot setback? It is. It is just a straight five feet. Um, in the fringe zones, you'll see that stair stepped. Um, you know, add four feet for a second story, but that's not in the case in the SR zone. It's just a straight five feet. Thanks, Tammy. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why this was continued last month was that the petitioner was uh, not on the call and I did give him some specific instructions on how to call in today. So I'm hoping that he did attend and so I'm here. Oh, great. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Tammy? I'm not muted, right? Okay, just wanted to check. Uh, and is this the petitioner here then? Yeah, yes. Okay, Mr. Salders. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, would you like to, I assume? 
I did not hear you. Would you like to speak? Well, I mean, okay. I, need I to don't really, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say, but the guy beside me that at borders does not have a problem with the lean to there. And if the emergency vehicles need to get in, hey, there's I ways need to, to get in. You. To go. Sir, can I swear you in first? Yeah, yeah, if you want to. All right. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you, sir. You may continue. Okay. If an ambulance or emergency vehicle needs to get in, they could go through my side yard. They could go up his driveway. There's no problem getting emergency vehicles to my backyard or his backyard with that lean to there. Okay, so uh, you wish to say, Mr. Saunders? Not that I know of. I mean, I wouldn't know what's wrong with a good sound structure to tear it down when there's no need in it. Does, any questions for Mr. Saunders? Okay. I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, Mr. Saunders, can this be located someplace else on your property? Well, I mean, maybe, but it'd just be a problem taking it down and moving it. And is it used for a specific purpose? Uh, storage, so I don't have junk scattered all over my yard. <laughs> okay. I mean, I just got storage in it. I mean, I try to keep my place up and clean. And that takes care of a lot of that. So, I mean, it's one way or the other. I mean, that's what the reason it's there for, you know, okay. to put stuff in where, no, where, where it's not an eyesore. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Saunders? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Saunders. Is there anybody else here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that wishes to get to speak against this petition? I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Uh, so we'll entertain a motion. I've got a, I've got a, just a quick confirmation question. So, Mr. Souders had he had talked to his neighbor on the, I'm not sure. I guess that's on the west side, uh, on the side where the lean to is built, and there's not been any. Uh, he doesn't have a problem with it. Is there anybody else in the neighborhood that staff is aware of that could be directly affected by this that's called in or written any sort of letter that right. has um, got an issue? I had two people call in and inquire about it, and one person um, chose to not speak, I would just say. So they didn't want to remonstrate or anything or? No, we had a lot of talks about it, but they chose not to submit anything or be present at this meeting. Okay, any other questions? Somebody like to make a motion? One thing I do want to mention prior to the motion is that uh, to grant a development standards variance, you must meet the findings. Uh, it's not enough just because the neighbors don't object. Uh, it's not zoning by consent of the neighbors, it's zoning and what the ordinance says. If there are practical difficulties in utilizing the property uh, that make a development standard variance appropriate, then uh, you should grant it. Uh, but those are the standards, not whether the neighbor cares or not, because there might be another neighbor uh, in the future, and there are also people who don't want to get involved in these neighborhood disputes, uh, but rely upon the zoning ordinance to be enforced. Larry, can you repeat what you said about uh, granting it? Excuse me? You, you said something about uh, we should grant it, and, but I don't know. No, no, I'm saying in order, in, in order to grant the variance from side yard setbacks, 
you must find that there are practical difficulties in utilizing the property unless the variance is granted. That's the standard under the statute and the standard under our ordinance. Uh, Dave, if you want to jump in, you can too. Okay. There he is. Okay. For just for clarification, the reason why I asked that question is I just wanted to make sure that there weren't others that I'm probably the least least uh, persuaded by neighbors on certain petitions. So I understand what you're saying, Larry, and thank you for asking that question or making that comment. But that that's not where I was going with my question. I, I understand. I just, want to, I just sure. want to make it clear for all the members that the standard is that. Uh, and secondly, we usually require a letter or uh, the appearance of a neighbor into the record in order to support that type of a finding. Certainly. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Souders, I've got a quick question. Where can you go back to the image, uh, Tammy, of the of the the, ob the oblique photo? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Where is your is this on septic out here? It is. Is your septic field in the back or is it in the front? Front yard, Presby system. Okay, so there's no, so you've got a Presby in the front yard and then is there a reserve, was there ever a reserve field? Because there's not much area there, for a reserve field on your property. There was a septic, there was a septic system in the backyard and the tank is still in the backyard and the system's in the front yard. Okay, I. That's all I've got. I I think I can make a motion if we. If, uh, I'm not squelching the conversation, Mary Beth, but you'd asked for it before, so. Okay, go ahead, make a motion, please. <laughs> you're Bernie. You're muted, you're muted Bernie. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, we'll see how long this lasts because I got to get the petition number. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Beautiful, thank you. All right, case number 2009-VAR-69, Souter Side Yard Setback variance from Chapter 804 at 1750 East Vera Lane. I move that we approve the variance To the side yard setback uh, and I see that practical difficulties have been met. Second. Been moved and seconded that the uh, uh, petition 2009-VR-61 uh, salary side yard variance development standard uh, petition uh, be approved uh, based upon an amended finding of practical difficulty uh, is that right there, Bernie? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and it's been moved and seconded. Uh, the vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance based upon the amended findings. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? No. Mary Beth Gismarchek? No. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Okay, the variance is approved by a three to two vote. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sauter. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and next up we have case number 2009-VAR-72 and 73. Uh, Jackie. Thanks, Mary Beth. So this is a case that was continued from last meeting. So I want to bring everyone up to speed on it. So they're requesting a digital sign variance as well as a landscaping variance 
at the property located on the corner of Rogers and Country Club at 2801 South Rogers. Um, the property is 0.26 acres and it's zone limited business. So a little bit of summary or history on this site. Um, they have previously received variances on this site. Um, for digital signs specifically, they received a variance to allow for 4.75 square feet and they're now asking for 16.9 square feet of digital signage. So in our ordinance, we strictly prohibit digital signs. So then you have to go through the design standards variance process in order to get it approved. Uh, the landscaping at this current moment, they have about 786 D value, which is equivalent to about 99 shrubs and they're short a 1,096 D value from what's required, which is about 137 shrubs. So here we are in the county jurisdiction uh, to the north and to the east, you have city jurisdiction and then to the west and the south is county, including this parcel. Uh, the property is zone limited business and the site, uh, this is an older aerial here. It's actually built out as a gas station now. Um, but it is connected to all utilities. Um, in the comprehensive plan, this area was designated as mixed residential. Um, and so right now, what the petitioner is asking for are digital signs to be located. So I wanted to show a site plan um, of D1, D2, and D3, where the digital signs would be located. I will note that signs, wall signs in general, would be permitted to go in these in these spots. It's just the fact that they want to add digital signage, um, including pricing, which is part of the changeable signage that's allowed, uh, not allowed under the ordinance. So um, I've done like a little schematic here to show you what it might look like on the building. So this is the south side of the building. They want a pricing sign here to catch people going north on Rogers. Um, they have a sign here that would be on the east side of the building, catching people going through Country Club. It looks very similar here. And then kind of the larger sign um, here is at the intersection of Rogers and Country Club facing the light. So this top portion of the sign is permitted um, per previous uh, zoning um, variances, but the pricing sign here is over the limit of 4.75 square feet. Um, so on the right, I have a picture of what they originally proposed, which was 4.75 square feet. And uh, this sign was double sided. And so it, it met, but now they want to um, pretty drastically, you know, increase the amount of, of digital signage on the, on the property. So they have to come back for a variance. Um, then on the landscaping, so previously there was a variance permitted to allow a shortened buffer yard to allow for emergency vehicles through this site. Um, so on the right hand side, you have the buffer yard and I'm circ or I guess putting in squares in yellow, the missing landscaping. So trees are very difficult to locate on this property and trees are what account for more value in terms of landscaping. So if you can't physically fit trees, you're stuck with um, putting in shrubs. And so you need a lot more shrubs to equal one tree that you're replacing. It's about a, um, let's see, it'd be about a five to one ratio to replace a tree with shrubs. And then this red area is the bioretention area. And I've kind of added this separately from the buffer yards because this is where all the water that drains from the site is said to go and they have a bioretention and then a drain that actually goes to the storm sewer here. And so this area was supposed to be landscaped and um, as you'll see in the site photos it's it's not landscaped at all at this point and they like to keep it to only include um, grass and no uh, other landscaping at all. So here are some site photos of the property. You have the parking island that does have adequate landscaping. And this photo over here on the right, just showing you kind of the, the thin strip that exists here um, with shrubs located along it. And then out towards the intersection of Country Club um, and the driveway here, they do have um, some landscaping as well. Uh, this is the bioretention area. 
And um, in speaking with our stormwater division located in the highway department, Terry Quillman and Connie Griffin, they're the MS4 contacts. They really wanted to see some sort of landscaping um, along this area. They weren't as much concerned about the other landscaping around the site, but this area in particular, um, they mentioned that it has a lot of functionality in terms of uh, cleaning the water before it goes into the storm sewer. They also have um, sort of like a sand filtration on the site, but um, according to the petitioner who was on the call tonight, um, their concern was that adding landscaping to this area would impede the functionality of the bioretention, but um, the MS4 department um, disagrees on that front and says that it will actually enhance the bioretention functionality. So the um, two requests, staff has recommended denial um, based on the findings, and I'll take any questions that you might have on this case. Any questions, uh, staff? I've got a question. Uh, Jackie, on the, let's go to the east property line uh, where the, the trees are supposed to go. <clears throat> yeah, your yellow boxes are, yeah, that to the right there. So when they submitted for the variance before, if I'm correct, they, they wanted to push that over closer to the east property line in order to allow for more space for the ve emergency vehicles or whatever to get through. Is that correct? Yes. And at that time, we had addressed the landscaping issue and said that we should probably apply for a landscaping variance, but they were able to show a certified plan set that met the landscaping. Um, even though it didn't physically happen that way, so. Right, well, that's not your responsibility to make sure that what's on that plan is gonna fit. Uh, so what well, I'm gonna ask the petitioner is, why didn't the plan work with what they thought was gonna happen? So, and then as far as on the south side with the, with the buyer retention, uh, did Connie or Terry discuss at all what if they could modify the types of plants because there's room there's room for for bioretention species to go in that that strip? So I'm wondering if it's a difference in the type of plantings or the petitioners got somebody that says that grass will do better than what our MS4 and zoning inspector believe to be the case. Yeah, that is a good question for the petitioner who's here tonight. Um, they are working with a landscaping company and I do believe they may have been advised in, in that direction, but um, yeah, it was a, a disagreement, I guess, by our MS4. Okay, so then one more question. On the signage, is it 16.9 feet total or is it per sign? 16.9 square feet total. So right now they only have 14 or sorry, 4.75 square feet total of signage. And we just are counting this area that I'm outlining with the mouse here is okay. the digital. So the, the surrounding border um, does not get counted towards that digital. It's just the piece of the sign that can change. So if we put on our old fashioned hat, and they've got the digital, we, we, we don't allow the digital, would they be able to put that same sign up, not make it digital and hang numbers off of a, a sign they would have to regularly change? Unfortunately, the changeable copy is, is similarly prohibited. So either one would be back here for a variance. Okay, that's all I've got. Thanks, Jackie. Yep. So Jackie, I have a question uh, on this uh, page you have up now. So the one uh, that's uh, at the bottom, on the right side, is that what they want to put up now? And they were given uh, permission to do that. So what is the difference that would still show how much regular and diesel is compared to the, the bigger sign? Yeah, they, so... That's a good question, Vicki. This sign um, was going to be actually a pole sign. And okay. so it was going to be double sided. But the way that the sign ordinance counts square feet is if it's not wider than I believe it's three feet, 
then it doesn't count both sides square footage. So really, if you were thinking about it, um, it would be probably closer to like the 10 square feet range that was permitted if you were to count both sides, but our code says it would count as 4.75. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that made me ask another question. Sorry, Jackie. Uh, so the sign, the mobile, let's just say the mobile sign, I don't know who, I'm not sponsoring a provider here, but the mobile sign is a permitted pole sign that would be out off the building and what they're proposing is the bigger, the larger square footage of signs that are affixed to the structure. Am I right? Correct. Can you pull up the site map and showing the intersection and maybe put your arrow where the proposed sign, pole sign would be? Good one. So the pole sign was going to be located here as well as here. But there were some other physical impediments. Um, there's a, a fairly large power line along the front side of the building and also um, a, a setback of, I believe it was going to be five feet that they would have to be required to meet. And with those two things, um, at least on one side, if not both sides, you couldn't actually see the sign very well. Any further questions, Jackie? Don't see any from the board at this point. Is the petitioner here? Yes, I am here. Okay. Do you raise your hand for me? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Yes, uh, thank you for that, Jackie. Uh, the sign looks very good. Uh, you did a great presentation. All right, so the sign, if there is a pole sign possible, you know, we actually saving money because that sign worked for both sides due to the power line, you know, and uh, from that variance, the space variance, we are not able to put that sign. So ob obviously there is a double cost and uh, the manual number, it's not possible because the height of the sign we have to put over there, it's, I think it's about more than 10 or 12 feet. So uh, it's, it's not a possible manual sign, but the digital sign will work for us. And you used to be, this location was like uh, completely, uh, different for many, many years, many years. And uh, Jackie helped us out to put this uh, beautiful building here. And uh, now piece of property looks great. Everybody's happy. Neighbors comes all the time here, repeated neighbors. The only thing they like to see is the gas price before they enter in the store. And yes, about that uh, landscaping thing, we did bought the plant. What was uh, before, according to the plan, we did purchase, it was about $6,800 we purchased the plant. Plant came over there and uh, the trunk by itself, the uh, trees was little over three feet. The space over there was two feet only. So there was waiting how to plant. Maybe do you have to uh, scrub a little bit, then after the tree will not grow. That was the another thing. The space was only two feet and the plant, actual plant, the thickness that uh, tree had uh, maybe certain specific size, maybe thumb size, a little bit over the thumb size. And uh, that trunk has to have a three feet circle to dig in. So we was not able to plant anything over there on the east side. We did plant a two or three on nearby the uh, utility line where it was possible. And uh, on the south side where one of our 
person who was a, a hired person from the landscaping, they told us more you put here, the most water will stuck there. That's what his recommendation was. And that's only reason we told them, okay, we will talk with a variance and we will come up with some another ideas. We are waiting for your wisdom. Anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Patel, so on the east side where the yellow boxes are, my question is with the fence constructed and the distance between the curb and the fence, uh, why, what design change that didn't, and I respect the fact that design, what you see changes. So I'm not going there, but I'm just asking what design or what change that showed the design wasn't going to work versus when it was on paper and showed that it was. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, uh, uh, on paper, it was looking good before we, are, before we seen actual plans. Everything was looking fine. But when the actual plants came, it was not working. The plant, the trunk was about three feet wide. So we have to dig at least three feet. But the portion, the landscaping area is two feet only. So then the, all the plants went bad. And then, excuse me if this has already been answered, but what are you proposing to, are you proposing to put anything in at all on the east side? Yes, sir. Uh, like there is no room actually if we put like it's going to look like a jungle it's not going to look like a landscaping on the south side there is a room if we put more plants there is a possibility i don't have a problem if you say that go ahead and put more plants you know you guys know a lot more than i do so i don't have a problem but uh, that was just as somebody's suggestion that if you put more plants here, the water will collect. But that's uh, somebody's opinion. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Patel? I do. Uh, Mr. Patel, first of all, the corner looks a lot better, so thank you. But I'm going to go back to the sign. Can that smaller sign be attached to the building? To see from 25 or 40 feet uh -huh. away, it has to number certain size only. Okay. If, it is, if it is smaller number, then you have to come to the building and then you can read, you know, then its purpose. Uh, it's not the serving purpose. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Patel? No? Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? Not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against the petition? When it comes back to staff, I'd like to, or to the plant, the board, I'd like to have a little further discussion. Okay. Not seeing anyone that wants to speak against the petition. Mark, you had a question? Well, it's more of a discussion. It has to do with these design standards and uh, the overall look of our community. And uh, this is exactly, I guess, a prime example of a, a conflict we have because it, while the corner has been improved, uh, the question really um, before us is how do we want signs really through, not just on this property, but around uh, Monroe County to look, do we want them to be that large? Uh, my my um, opinion uh, is that people will find the gas station um, without the larger sign. They will know that it's there. It, this is not um, 
they will know that it's there. And I think that Mr. Patel can uh, make a decision. Would he rather show the price or the sign of the brand of the gasoline? So that's just a, a question among us. How do we want our community to look? And then secondly, I'm, uh, I'm really struggling with the bioretention and the filtering of uh, potential fuel spills and oil spills uh, from the pavement because it is a gas station and, um, and the landscaping requirements not being met. I can't see how um, the 4D trees could be um, planted in that small space, um, but uh, I don't know what the solution is. So. Um, I'm concerned about it, and uh, I, I think that it's worthwhile to discuss it further among ourselves. Yeah, I, I'm kind of going with you on this, Margaret, as far as the layout. And Jackie, could you go back to the, the, the diagram that you showed where the uh, permitted pole signs are going to be placed? Basically, basically, the northeast corner and the southwest corner of the sites up up near the roadway. Is that correct? Yes. And then on the south, can you show an, an aerial of the, the property? Let me, I'm kind of curious what's going on uh, the south of Joiner. Okay, that doesn't. That doesn't. I mean, I. I, I think that the signs on the building, to me, are a little less intrusive than the signs that are going to be up at the roadway. Uh, and I, I, you know, these are not typically glaring, bold signs. While it seems like a lot, they're on different facing, so you, you don't see them at the same time. And part of me says that you know, the, the, the signs on the building are probably a lesser evil than, or not, I want to use the word evil. I don't believe that. <laughs> uh, are, are a lesser circumstance than uh, the signs out near the right-of-way and the, and the monolithic or the pole signs that, that are going to be permitted, even though at the northeast corner with the overhead line, I don't know how practical that's going to be, but that's what they can do. So they can work that out with Duke or whatever. I don't really care. On the east line and on the south line for the buffer yard, I don't want uh, Connie and Terry to have to do a design for them, nor do I want the planning staff. But I think that what they need to do, and I would be, I'm kind of leaning in my thought that we look at this and, and Mr. Patel have his engineer slash landscaper or landscape architect develop a plan that is as close as possible to what needs to happen, whether that's 100% or as close as it can be done by a professional person instead of just saying zero, no, we're not going to do anything because we are working off of a built environment. And, you know, I do think that this store is much better than what was sitting there for, for many, many years, as Mr. Patel said. Uh, so th those are my thoughts, Margaret. I think you and I were tracking a little bit there, but those are my thoughts on your comments. Well, those are convincing arguments to me. Uh, those are convincing arguments. And I think you also um, advised a sound plan for going forward uh, for Mr. Patel to speak with his landscaper and to come up with as uh, good a possible so a solution. I mean, I have seen trees that are designed so that they are rather horizontal rather than circular, you know, but I just don't know what that would take and whether or not they would uh, live there. And that's the problem. You know, um, I'm not a landscaper and uh, maybe perhaps his expert would have a solution that could get us closer. Well, I think we got to remember, you know, the purpose of the bioretention basin is to stall water a little bit yes. and let it float down through the system and then drain out. So, you know, the argument not to have plants is actually an argument to have plants a little bit, but again, I'm not going to design it for them, and I don't want Jackie to design it for them, and I don't want Terry and, and uh, Connie to design it for them, because they've got, another, they've got enough stuff to design for us, not doing it, doing it for a petition that, that 
you know, it's quality product. I mean, I, I'm not knocking the petition at all, but I think it needs to be zeroed in just a little bit. And I don't want the staff to have to do all the work. So do we continue that aspect of the, of the do we um, take action on the signs and continue the landscaping? No, I, I, my suggestion is I don't want to see this again. Yes. Uh, the agendas are full and I think that we've got a very competent staff to be able to in, in the whole county, not just Jackie and her team or Larry and Jackie and their team. But, you know, I think that, I think that we can maybe craft a motion at least from my standpoint, that we can allow some latitude on staff standpoint without them having to get elbow deep in the work. And, and you know, it's going to be a petitioner's job to meet the requirements because what's going to happen if we say we're not going to allow the variance, there's going to be certain things that they're not going to be able to do. So we're going to see it again. So we've got to give staff, I think, the opportunity to, to approve this based on what they think that they can Okay. Do and go from there. So that's that, that. Those are my words. I'm good with that. Okay. I've got a question on this sign, and I probably should have asked staff this earlier. Now, the only problem with the sign is that it's a changeable copy. Is that correct? Digital or changeable copy, same category. Yes. And the only copy that is on the sign that is changing is the gas prices. Yes, so let me go ahead and show you. Um, so with the mouse, this portion here is the digital sign copy. This portion with the logo of the business is actually permitted at this location. So if they just had this portion up here, um, that would be permitted. Okay, so it's the changing of the gas prices that's the issue. Yeah, and, and we have to be content neutral on signage. Um, so you just, we just make it prohibited any changing con, well, not content, but just changing material. I don't know how to say, but it's, that's why it's prohibited is that we can't control what this says or, or anything. So we're regulating this more strictly than the logo portion. Okay, uh, it's just, I know that in the past, the uh, board has approved uh, digital gas price changing before. Yes, and they have a permission to do 4.75 square feet. So the sign in the bottom right is actually what they originally proposed and that would be permitted, but now they're asking for uh, more digital signage square feet. No, if I have the pole sign, then it consider both sign together combined only 4.75 but uh, if it is two separate then they count as a double so, yeah, Mary, so, so if it's up on stilts um it's a two-sided sign and it meets the requirements but uh aesthetically it could be um considered favorable to have it attached to the wall and also there's the utility issue Yes. The utility line Visibility, issue. yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any more questions for staff or any more discussion? Are we ready to make a motion? In the event that um, the BZA does wish to approve the variances, we'd like to see conditions associated with those approvals. So I think you were on the same track um, Margaret and Bernie, as, as we were thinking, um, and then um, for the landscaping specifically, we did not check this with Dave since our official recommendation was to deny. Um, I'm not sure if we have to determine the exact number of plantings since they, right now the ordinance gives us an exact number that we come to, but um, that was something that maybe if you have a suggestion for that or you want it to be uh, delegated to staff, we could try and come up with something. Well, this is number one, this is what you had pre-drafted for a recommended motion, is that right? If there, if there was a recommendation for approval, yes, we'd like to see conditions. So on this okay. is for landscaping and then the prior page is for digital signs. So we'd like to see three conditions associated. 
And this is working with Paul from the highway department as well, so. <laughs> Dave, um, do you have a, a thought on the BZA allowing for a condition that just says that staff could determine the appropriate number of plantings or would they need to come up with an, an exact number? Well, um, I think that you could uh, determine the number of plantings uh, with, I mean, you could certainly say within a certain range in other words, uh, within 60% of the uh, required number or something like that as a minimum, but being as close as possible to um, uh, the original plan as, as they can be achieved. But I think it'd be helpful if you, there were some standards, some limitations put in there. Okay. That's helpful. And, and I don't know what a reasonable amount would be. I mean, you don't want to come up with a condition that's going to get, get them back in front of you shortly. So uh, I don't know right. what, what if, if Mr. Patel has any suggestion or staff does. Dave, that was kind of my question because I'm not, I'm, I'm not the person to determine what that number is, but Right now we're starting at compliance. So that would be the number. And then they just have to satisfy staff based on what 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 they put in their design. Is that, am I missing something or is that too loose for you? Well, I mean, to me, it, it's helpful to have some some criteria for them to, to exercise their, their discretion on as to whether it comes close or not. Um, but I mean, if there's if there's a condition that says, you know, uh, if the engineers or the design folks that uh, the petitioner uh, hires can demonstrate that uh, site limitations prohibit full com or to the extent that they can demonstrate uh, that the uh, site limitations prohibit full compliance, then they have to get as close to compliance as possible and have that certified by, by the landscaper or whoever's doing the work. Just to give you an idea, if we go with the percentage idea, they're at about 41% of the total required landscaping for the site currently. I just look at 137 shrubs and I just can't see where they're gonna go, you know? Yeah, that's a lot of shrubs being there. <laughs> uh, so that's a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I don't know what the objective is, but if, if you could say that, uh, that they have to design uh, a landscaping plan and that, uh, you know, provides, uh, you know, reasonable buffering to adjoining properties uh, or, or uh, you know, some kind of a standard to say, you know, it, it obscures the view of the, of the site from or most of the, uh, the active areas of the site. Uh, you know, 137 shrubs is a lot, so I guess I guess my yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to come up with something other than to say come as close as you can uh, within the space that you have. Okay, uh, Jackie, would you would you go ahead and and put your give me time to read the first one in this, your recommended motions, please. Our conditions, excuse me, not your motions, but your recommended commission conditions.
And then on number one, no pole signs with digital material is prohibited. And that the reason why you said that is so they didn't end up with both. Yeah, if they're doing wall signs, then um, I'd like to just see it all be wall signs. That's what the comprehensive plan recommends in this area. And then on number three, show me, show me on remove the non-permitted diesel sign. Yeah, that is, they have a existing um, brown changeable copy diesel sign because they don't have any other pricing signs that they leave on the ground near Rogers Street. So it's just kind of a avoiding enforcement and just making it a condition to get rid of that. Okay, so the last sentence in number one are in the in number three, just just make sure that they're not double dipping on extra signs on the property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then go ahead, if you could please go to the other conditions that you're recommending. Okay, I just, I just can't come up. I don't know of a percentage, but if uh, I can help, I can maybe come up with a motion here. If I'm not squelching the conversation, Mary Beth, I'm just, if, if we're looking at the conditions and uh, we can try something. All right. Anytime you're ready. Okay, okay I'm going to be going. Am I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to be going back and forth here, so bear with me. So, uh, matter of case number, I'm going to do these separately. Okay. Uh, in the matter of case number 2009 VAR 72, Design Standards Variance Chapter 807, which is the prohibition of changeable digital copy. Uh, and then Jackie, could you put your recommended motions up there for that? Either or there. Sure, this uh, is there. Bernie, I'll just make one other mention that you could restrict, if the BZA had an issue with the total amount proposed, you could kind of compromise a number between 4.75 and 16.9. I'll just add that as well. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't have enough information to intelligently come up with the number so since this the number is what you're reviewing then i'll keep it at that uh okay i move approval of the case number 2009 var 72 uh based on the findings of fact in the staff report with the following conditions digital signs placement is limited to locations on either the canopy or the wall and no pole signs with digital material are permitted Two digital slash illuminated signs shall be dimmed in the evening hours. Three, remove the non-permitted diesel fuel sign from the property. Uh, Bernie, would you also add a finding that uh, the board does find practical difficulties in utilization of the site? And uh, I see that there are practical difficulties for the petitioner in utilizing the site. I second the motion. I call roll for us, Larry. Okay. The vote is on petition number 2009-ER-72, variance from the digital sign provisions of chapter 807. A vote in favor is a vote to approve based upon the uh, of findings 
uh, set forth in the motion and shown by the uh, provided by the staff at tonight's meeting. Uh, the uh, motion is based on the finding of practical difficulties and is subject to the following conditions of approval. Visual sign placement is limited to the location on either side of the canopy or the wall. No pole signs with digital material is permitted. And secondly, digital, digital eliminated signs shall be dimmed in the evening hours. And three, remove the conditional upon removal of the non permitted diesel gas sign presently on this site. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve. Uh, Bernie Garitas. Yes. William Hosea. Yes. Mary Beth Kismarchuk. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Margaret Clements. Yes. Uh, Variance 2009 JCR 72 is approved, subject to the conditions set forth in the motion. Okay. Okay. In the matter of, am I still live here? Yep. You're still okay. Going. In the in the matter of case number two zero zero nine dash VAR dash seven three design standards variance chapter eight three zero uh the buffer yard landscaping requirements at twenty eight zero one South Roger Street. Uh I move that we approve the variance as requested with the condition that the petitioner contract a professional landscape company and or a professional landscape architect to design a landscaping plan for the bar retention area and the east property line that will be approved by the MS4 assistant and the MS4 coordinator with the design to be certified and signed by the noted professionals and the number of plantings will be to the satisfaction of the MS4 coordinator, assistant and staff to be as close as possible to the ordinance. If no agreement is met, then the petitioner will need to plant what's required. And if a site plan adjustment is necessary, they'll have to come back to the BZA for approval for the site plan adjustments. Due to the practical and I believe, difficulties. And I believe that practical difficulties due to the site conditions have been met. I second the motion. Okay. Uh, the motion is on uh, petition number 2009-VR-73, uh, a variance from the design standards of Chapter 830 landscaping requirements. Uh, the motion is to approve based upon the finding of practical difficulty and with the following conditions of approval, uh, that petition shall work with a professional landscape company to design a landscaping plan for the bioretention area to uh, be approved and signed off by all the design professional and the MS4 assistant and the MS4 coordinator. Uh, at that point, the number of, uh, we've lost it. <laughs> okay, there we go, thank you. Uh, number of times planning to be determined at the review stage. Uh, planning shall be installed for uh, the approved plans in a reasonable time period is determined by staff. Uh, in the event of planning that are not installed, uh, then this year shall su submit a revised site plan uh, with a new planting schedule and seek any needed variances at that time. Is that good enough, Brian? Yeah, the only thing I had is they may need to consult a landscape architect and that way you've got somebody that's oh, got okay. professional licensure that, that may have a little bit more uh, risk in the game if okay. if it doesn't work. Uh, with, with the addition that they consult a a landscape architect as registered with the state of Indiana, is that what you were looking mm -hmm. at? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll add that to the to the motion. Uh, I won't repeat it all, but then we'll add that provision that uh, work with a professional landscape company. Uh, 
including a registered landscape architect to design a landscaping plan. That amendment to the motion. Okay, again, a vote in favor of the motion is a vote to approve uh, based upon a finding of practical difficulties and subject to the conditions set forth uh, in the motion. Uh, William Hosea? Yes. Rebecca Kasmarchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Mara Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Okay. Uh, the variance is granted with the conditions as set forth in the motion. Thank you, Mr. Patel. You have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you. Okay, Thank next, you. Yeah. And on to the new business. Uh, next up, we have uh, case number 2010-VAR-81. Drew? Hi, can you hear me okay this evening? Yes, we can, thank you. Okay, great. All right, so this is the Yeshua Tabernacle of Praise uh, Paving Requirement Design Standards Variance, Chapter 806. Um, it's located at 9700 West Foster Fiscus Road, and it's zoned Agricultural Rural Reserve. Um, the petition site is located in Bean Blossom Township, Section 30. It maintains frontage off of West Foster Fiscus Road and West State Road 46. Uh, the petitioner received site plan approval from planning staff for a religious facility in September of 2019. And following that site plan approval, both a grading permit and a building permit were issued to the petitioner. Uh, work began on the petition site earlier this year and a religious facility structure is now present on the property. Um, the purpose of this variance is to provide additional time for the uh, petitioner to raise funds to afford the cost of paving the approximate 15,000 square foot parking lot and drive. Um, <clears throat> should the variance receive approval, the petitioner will be granted a temporary land use certificate to utilize a gravel um, parking surface and also use the um, religious facility for its intended use. Um, as part of the standard site plan procedures, um, a complete installation of all improvements, um, including but not limited to building, landscaping, parking improvements are all required before a land use certificate can be issued. Um, so they would need to have paved um, the required uh, surface area in order to receive this uh, land use certificate and then a subsequent um, certificate of occupancy from the building department. So the parking standard where it requires the surface area Paving um, is what they are petitioning for a variance from uh, for a certain amount of time. Um, here's the location map. Like I said, it's in Bean Blossom Township off of West State Road um, 46. It's zoned Agricultural Rural Reserve and it's designated by the Monroe Comprehensive Plan as Farm and Forest. Um, here we have the site conditions map as well as the slope map. Um, the site contains the recently constructed 2,000 square foot religious facility structure, um, as well as some gravel area for that uh, uh, construction. Um, <clears throat> it's gained access off of West Foster Fiscus, which is designated as local road. Um, and there is no FEMA flood plain on the property. Um, there is, however, a uh, sinkhole conservancy area. There are two sinkhole conservancy areas on the property. Um, one is for a 0 0.01 anchor sinkhole, and the other one is for a, um, I believe it's a, a 0.44 acre sinkhole, excuse me. Um, here we have some site photographs. Um, this is the driveway cut off of West Foster Fiscus. And then here we have that driveway that extends up to that religious facility structure that's been recently built uh, that's in the background there. Um, just more photographs of the petition site. Um, that one on the left has a, uh, an image of the uh, structure as well as a board that has all of their permits posted uh, very neatly. Um, and then the right photograph is of that uh, future parking area. More photographs here. I'm just looking around the site uh, where the parking area will be. 
Here we have the petitioner's letter um, to the Board of Zoning Appeals that states their intent to um, petition for the variance in order to have more time to raise the appropriate funds. Um, they're asking for a, an allot allotted time of five years to raise the funds um, to do that paving requirement. Um, and then here we have a page from their approved site plan, um, as well as on the next page, I have a zoomed in of uh, their particular um, parking page for the site plan. Um, it has a little bit more detail of where all of those uh, spaces will go eventually, as well as um, the uh, ADA compliant spaces um, and sidewalks that lead up to the religious facility. So overall, planning staff recommends approval of the design standards variance for the parking lot servicing requirement request based on the findings of fact and subject to the following conditions. One, two hard service parking spaces meeting ADA requirements shall be installed prior to issuance of the land use certificate. Number two, curbs and sidewalks as shown on the site plan shall be installed prior to issuance of a land use certificate. And three, that this variance is for five years and will expire on December 1st 2025. I will now take any questions. Anyone have any questions for Drew? No questions. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Uh, yes, I believe David Jenner. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I'm here. David, can I swear you in first? Yep, go ahead. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, sir. Proceed. I think Drew presented it very well. Um, there's not a lot to it. Um, we're willing to agree to the conditions. You know, we've put it in the ADA, all the curbs, because presently all those are in anyways. Um, all the bio detention areas in, and um, most of the plants are already in. So. Um, and obviously it's right now incurring about a $50,000 bill to put down the pavement. So we're hoping for a little more time to come up with that money. I think other than that, that's all I really have to say. Be happy anyone to answer any questions. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Jenner? I'm not seeing any Mary Beth. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jenner. Is there anyone here who else who would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Well, I'm going to give Bernie a break here. <laughs> hey, um, hey Margaret. Could, could I make a suggestion? This is yes. Dave Schilling. Yes, yeah, Dave. It, it, you know, I guess my feeling is it it would be better to have a to approve this with a commitment, a written commitment that they pave within five years rather than uh, a temporary variance. I think it's a little safer. Okay, so um, I'd like to recommend make a motion that we approve the design standards variance for the parking lot servicing requirement. Uh, based on the findings of fact in this regards, case number 2010-VAR-81, and that's for the Yeshua uh, Tabernacle of Praise and um, at 9700 West Foster Fiscus Road. And uh, the conditions under which this uh, motion are made are as follow. Um, number one, Two hard surface parking spaces meeting ADA requirements shall be installed prior to issuance of a land use certificate. Number two, curbs and sidewalks as shown on the side site plan shall be installed prior to issuance of a land use certificate. And third, that a written commitment be obtained from the Tabernacle of Praise uh, that um, the work will be completed in five years and will expire, this variance will expire on December 1st. 2025. I'll second that. Dollar roll, Larry. Uh, does that work for you, Dave? Yes. Sure. Um, who do, or which Dave are you talking to? Both Dave. 
My my question is, who do I turn the uh, document into? Just the planning department to Drew. Yeah, we, we will get that state. commitment prepared for you, for the uh, church to sign. Uh, that will be recorded, and that way it's a uh, a permanent commitment that the work will be done. Okay. So got what day is getting back? Getting to. Okay, let me repeat the uh, motion. Motion is to approve 2010-VRS81, Yeshua Tabernacle of Praise, uh, design standards variance from the parking requirement uh, that requires a hard surface. Again, a vote to approve is based upon practical difficulties and is subject to the, it's based on the finding of practical difficulties is based upon the uh, filing, uh, uh, based upon the findings of fact, subject to the finding following conditions. Two hard service parking spaces meeting AD requirements shall be installed prior to issuance of a land use certificate. Two curbs and sidewalks as shown on the site plan shall be installed prior to issuance of a land use certificate. And that a written commitment will be uh, entered into by the uh, tabernacle for a period which will require completion of the hard surface paving within five years, and uh, this variance will expire on December 1st, 2025. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the period, approve the uh, development standards variance uh, subject to the findings of fact and the conditions set forth at tonight's meeting. Mary Beth Kasparchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Uh, William Hosea. Yes. Uh, the variance with conditions is approved by a five to zero vote. Okay. Thank you. You have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. And next up we have case number 2010-VAR-83. Donna Guy. Ann, this is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Mary Beth. So this design standard variance is from the chapter 804 rear yard setback requirement. The property is located in Perry Township at 5280 South Victor Pike. It is 0 0.9 acres and is zoned a state residential. So the petitioner is requesting, um, this is a good slide to stay on. So the petitioner is requesting uh, this variance because um, they're currently kind of going through the process of getting some after the fact building permits. Um, so they have been working with the zoning inspector, Rachel Henry on some as is improvement location permits. Um, this variance is for a structure, a a residential accessory structure, so barn, uh, that was constructed without a permit on an existing concrete pad. Uh, currently, the structure is located two feet from the rear property boundary. Uh, this zone would require a 35 foot rear setback. So that's an encroachment of 33 feet. So current zoning is a state residential and the comprehensive plan does um, uh, zone this area as an employment zoning district. Um, on thank you. On there's very little uh, slopes over 15% on the property. Um, the property has access to septic and water. Um, the pad that the garage was built on. Um, it it was originally already a barn and that was removed some years ago and then rebuilt. So um, before, before rebuilding the barn, it was that structure would have been a pre-existing non-conforming, um, but once it was removed and rebuilt, it triggered, um, it would have needed to be relocated to, in order to meet the rear yard setback. So, the aerial image on the screen is the current building 
and uh, on the right is their site plan showing that the barn is two feet off the property boundary. Um, the petitioner did want me to include, I believe it's the next slide. Um, they have, they submitted these images and uh, some outline of where the existing pad was and how it looks for um, <clears throat> the thickness of the concrete and why they were reusing it. So the original building was damaged by uh, falling trees during a storm. Uh, kind of an interesting thing, their uh, petitioner's letter states that they had an uncontrollable infestation of snakes. So that's, that's a new one for, for me to hear. Um, the building, the metal building is 24 by 40. Um, and yeah, the, so the original, original concrete pad is still uh, within two feet of the property boundary. Um, so their approval of this variance would uh, allow the garage to stay on this pre-existing foundation in its current location. Uh, denial would, re would require the petitioners to meet the rear yard setback of 35 feet. So staff is recommending uh, denial based on the findings of fact, uh, primarily finding C, uh, where we were unable to prove a practical difficulty. Um, if the petitioner had applied for a building permit, uh, they would have, it would have been brought to their attention that a rear yard setback would had to have been met. So does anybody have any questions? Any questions for staff? Anne? Um, do is this, am I to understand correctly that this is exactly the same footprint of the building as it existed before the tree damage? So I believe the building is a little bit smaller than the original. Let's see. Um, but the concrete pad is 27 feet by 42 feet. Okay, thank you. Uncontrollable infestation of snakes. Right. I would like to hear from the petitioner about that. <laughs> um, I know they are on the call, and I, I believe she would like to speak a little bit more about those, uh, the attached images of the foundation. So looking at their letter again, um, it states that the concrete pad is two feet away from the property line. The building is technically three feet from the property line. Uh, it, so it is slightly smaller than what was originally there. And has any of the concrete, was any of the concrete re-poured as a part of this project? Because that front image looks like pretty new concrete to me. And I guess that's a question for the petitioner. Um, from my understanding is that it's pre-existing. They didn't do anything to the concrete, but they they can speak to that if I'm incorrect. Can you hear us? Yes. Are you the petitioner? Yes. Okay. You swear I, I, did, I did pour a little footing at the bottom. I wanted to put some rock on that to cover kind of the front of that little wall up. But but since I found out that uh, we weren't in compliance, I had been holding off on putting that little bitty block in front. Yeah, I, I poured a little bitty footer just where that says existing concrete. I was going to put a little block wall right there. So in the front of it, we did. But Can we, we go ahead and swear you in real quick? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do, you do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Terry and Donna. You so we've lived here for a uh, little over 37 years. And from my understanding, the old wood building that was on there was there for at least 12 to 15 years. So there has been a building on that side for at least half of a century up to this, this date. Uh, we had two trees come and just run almost the whole entire back of the wooden shed. And 
uh, we hired a metal contractor to do that and uh, to re replace, replace it with the metal building. And when they had the uh, uh, utilities marked and everything, I just assumed that they took care of everything. They, they got a permit too. And so my ignorance is, I guess, what we're talking about right now. Well, and also, um, uh, one thing that I neglected to um, put in the report, which I didn't even realize until me and Terry uh, started talking earlier today, is if the we can't move the building forward, that's our septic system. All of our septic lines are right in front of the building, and that's our field. So The whole backyard is, is septic lines, and... It, there's no room in, in front in the front of the house to, to put it. I guess that's why they originally put that shed there so they had some storage at the back of the property. Okay. Anyone have any questions for the petitioners? I've got it. I've got a, I think a quick one looking at the photo that, that, uh, Ann and Jackie have on the screen. That's a picture of the existing structure, is that correct? Yes, the one closest to the red line. In the back. In the back, yes. And is that an asphalt drive that, what or gravel drive, what's the drive that goes back to that? Asphalt, it's asphalt. So that, the drive and everything is intact and lines up with where your old building was and where, where you've, where yes. you've put the new structure on top of the existing foundation, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, and then the septic falls between the house and the and the, 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 the structure we're talking about, is that correct? Yes, sir, the septic's behind the house and that whole, that whole yard there is the three main lines and then filtering systems coming down from it. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any other questions for the petitioner? Seeing none, okay. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Okay, thank you. Uh, somebody like to make a motion, please. Yeah, I'll give Margaret a break. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but before we do, I have a question for Ann. Yes. Were there any conditions if we did, if the, uh, if we decided to approve this, the recommend approval? Uh, no, there are not. Uh, this variance would apply only to this structure. Um, so it would allow the after the fact issuance of an ILP building permit. Any future uh, structures would still have to meet the setback. Okay, in that case. W William, can I ask one quick question too? I'm sorry. Sure. So uh, Mr. Is it Mr. and Mrs. Guy? Is that yes, am I yes, correct? Sir. The, you're talk on that concrete little deal that we were talking about, were you just Pouring like a four inch brick ledge or something for the, for yeah. the block to sit on? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and which side of the building is that on? Is that on the, the asphalt driveway side? That's facing the house. Oh, so it's on the, so it's on the, okay. So it's facing the house where you said the septic field is. It'd be facing Victor Pike. Okay. So maybe we could include that they could add that, that brick ledge on the front of that concrete since he's already got it uh, prepped and ready to go. Th is that is that reasonable, William? Yes. Oh, thank you. Actually, Bree, I don't think that we're, if it's just a ledge, uh, I'm not sure it qualifies as a structure and I don't think it needs an ILP. Or okay. okay, okay, okay. You, you can put a sidewalk or a patio in that area without needing an ILP uh, from the side yard or variance from the side yard setback. Okay, thanks, Larry. That said, case number 2010-VAR-83, 
Design Standards Variance, Chapter 804, Rear Yard Setback at 5280 South Victor Pike. I recommend that we approve the petition. Second. Based on, um, uh, on environmental difficulties, you know, a tree falling down, snakes, and also the um, problem of locating a septic tank uh, somewhere else, I think, to me, creates environmental difficulties. Okay. Is that okay, um, William? That uh, part of the motion, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I'd like to second it then. Okay. Uh, there's been a motion to approve uh, petition number 2010-VR, VR-83, the library yard setback variance for a uh, story structure. Uh, the variance is for the story structure alone from the rear yard setback. And uh, the motion is made upon a finding of practical difficulties uh, due to the destruction of a previous uh, story structure by trees. And uh, the difficulty in moving the building or constructing a new building in the rear, in the remainder of the rear yard due to an existing septic tank system. Uh, Again, a motion of, of yes motion is a, mo a motion to approve the variance with the uh, the amended findings. Uh, Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Kaparczyk? Yes. Okay, the motion is approved. And I've been thinking that what we need to do is capture that Groundhog from the last meeting <laughs> to locate him to this site so we don't have a repeat of the snake infestation. There is the groundhog. We take there. care of it. <laughs> we have one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good evening. Okay, next up we have case number two zero. 10-VAR-84. Ann? Thank you. So this is the Harding Buildable Area variance from Chapter 804. This is from the 15% slope restriction for structures. So the petition site is located in Washington Township uh, at 555 Sylvan Lane. The property is currently zoned Agricultural Rural Reserve, uh, is 4.95 acres, and the comprehensive plan designates this as rural residential. So the property, the, so the petitioner is requesting this variance um, for the purpose of constructing a, a barn in an area that exceeds 15% slope. So, uh, it currently has a single family residence that was built in 1979 and also a detached garage. Um, in 2019, the area west of Sylvan Lane experienced tornado damage. Um, so we'll see a photo of that here on the next slide, but the, so the petitioner's property, they did quite a bit of cleanup after their tornado. There were a lot of downed trees and debris. So an area that ended up being kind of cleared out naturally by the tornado uh, after the tornado um, is the area that they're hoping to utilize for a barn. So uh, this area is uh, partially uh, over 15% slope and partially under. Um, it's a little difficult to tell from the photos, but you can, our most recent 2020 aerial imagery still shows um, the, the path of the tornado damage uh, that goes right to the petitioner's property. So staff is recommending to approve the design standard variance from the buildable area uh, based on the findings of fact and subject to Monroe County Highway and drainage engineer reports with the following conditions. One, have the petitioner apply for and receive a driveway permit from the Monroe County Highway Department. Uh, it appears that they've, uh, there is a second drive that's been used you know, for the equipment during the cleanup. Um, 
So if there's going to be that second drive, it should have an approved driveway permit. And then two, the second condition would be to, uh, prior to receiving an ILP, the petitioner um, seek out a surveyor to stake the entirety of the septic field and tank just to make sure that uh, there's no conflict between the driveway expansion and for accessing the barn and their, their existing septic system. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions for Ann? Not seeing any questions. Is the uh, petitioner here? I did not see anybody with their names earlier. Okay. All right. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? And just for the record, could you go back to the, the site overview and show where the petitioner had said the uh, septic system was located just for the board to notice why we have that condition? Yeah, so it's the septic system is located basically behind the current existing detached garage. Um, so there, you know, there is a chance that it could be draining or have a finger. Uh, over where they've been using accessing that back the backyard. Thank you. Well, I I thought you did a really great job of presenting this, and I have uh, no further questions. So I'd like to make a motion, Anne. Uh, I, hang on, Margaret. I've got a quick question. I think. Okay. So with that septic field, it's got to be marked out, but. Would the health department need to look at that and and to see where that septic field actually lies? Because I I'm not sure. I mean, a surveyor can mark it based on that, but does do they need to apply for a repair permit to to see where that septic field actually is? Well, we we could add a condition that they apply for a repair permit from Rio County, or yeah, or just whatever we can use to mark it. Because I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. I couldn't find, I, I couldn't determine where okay. the septic field is. So I, I don't know that if we would do that, we would make a motion that they could comply with reasonably. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Bernie, I think that's a great idea that uh, condition number two should be modified that requires the petitioner to apply for a septic repair permit through the Monroe County Health Department. And, and do you think we should just substitute that for the- uh, Yes. Repair? Okay. Yes. Bernie, that, was that satisfy you? Yeah, I'm good with it. Thanks. Okay, then I'm just going to proceed here. And uh, in with regard to case number 2010-VAR-84 um, at 555 Sylvan Lane, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the design standard variance from the buildable area requirement of Chapter 804 um, based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and drainage engineer reports with the following conditions. That number one, the petitioner apply for and receive a driveway permit from the Monroe County Highway Department. And number two, prior to the ILP issuance, the petitioner uh, seek out a, um, a repair permit or repair. Um, That's it. Repair from, from the county health department regarding the entirety of their septic field and tank to ensure that there is no conflict with any expansion to the driveway or the any problems with the environment for purposes of the barn construction. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and second to approve uh, petition number 2010 3 r 84 the Harding Global Area Variance from Chapter. 804 uh, based upon the findings uh, and subject to the uh, Rural County Highway and Drainage Injury Reports with the following uh, conditions that petitioner apply for receive a driveway permit from the Rural County Highway Department and prior to secondly prior to ILP issuance the petitioner obtained a repair permit from the Rural County Health Department uh, to assure there is not a conflict uh, with the existing on-site sewage disposal system 
uh, with the utilization of a driveway or access area for purposes of the barn construction. Again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve the variance. Uh, Margaret Clemens? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Louis Bosea? Yes. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Uh, the variance 2010-GR84 is approved by a five to zero vote. All right, thank you. They're not here, so I hope they have a good evening anyway. Okay, and next up, we have case number 2010-VAR-85, Juan Stevens. Uh, Rebecca, this one's yours. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this is a front yard uh, setback uh, variance request from chapter 804 for uh, one parcel or one property at 5349 North Westfall Court, and it contains 1.71 acres. Uh, in this case, the petitioner has applied for a permit for a detached garage. And during our review of that uh, permit application, it was discovered that there is an existing 10 foot by 16 foot storage shed already on the site that is built in the front yard setback and is encroaching approximately 15 feet. Um, the petitioner is now seeking a variance to the setback requirement um, in order to obtain an after the fact permit for the storage set shed so that they can proceed with um, building the detached garage. And in this case, the petition site has two front yards. Um, it sits between North Union Valley Road on the west side and uh, North Westfall Court on the east side. Uh, so again, this is uh, located in Richland Township and is currently zoned uh, estate residential. The comp plan has this designated as designated communities uh, and there are no slopes uh, present at the site nor is there uh, any karst issues. Here we have a picture of the existing short storage shed. Um, it was uh, built um, previously uh, and there were no permits sought for the construction of it. In this illustration, um, you can see sort of the bird's eye view of the situation. You've got the house. Um, and then, like I mentioned, they are planning to build a detached garage where the X is. And in the red circle is the existing shed that's sitting in the setback. Here we have the letter from the petitioner as well as uh, their site plan. Um, and again, this is for, we're talking about just the, uh, the existing storage shed for, um, that is part of this variance request. Uh, um, regarding a recommended motion for this petition, staff recommends denial uh, for the front yard setback design standards variance based on findings of fact, especially finding C. Um, in our review, we determined that the petitioner could actually relocate the shed so that it was not in uh, a setback um, and so therefore we didn't really find any practical difficulties uh, in this case. I can now take any questions. Any questions for Rebecca? I'm not seeing anyone from the board with questions, Mary Beth. Okay. Is the uh, petitioner here? Yes, I am. Okay, can I swear you in, sir? Yes. Do you swear to tell the, the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, Lon. All right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to speak on my wife's behalf. Uh, I need to kind of start at the beginning. Uh, before we were married, my wife purchased this property on a contract. 
During that time, her daughter, son-in-law, and three grandchildren were living with her. The garage uh, attached to the house is very small. Uh, with kids, bikes, lawnmowers, etc., you know, they needed the additional space. Uh, in addition to that, um, they were very heavy into permaculture, and the shed would provide additional storage space for the gardening. Nancy's son-in-law, Tyler, offered to do the construction <clears throat> as really a test of his construction techniques as he wanted to build a tiny house. Uh, it's built on concrete piers like a, a pole building would be built um, and really truly is not movable. Nancy built the, sh uh, the shed in good faith with limited knowledge of any building rules. However, she did follow the covenants of the subdivision that was provided to her when she purchased the home. Uh, the covenants reflected a six foot setback from the property line and to be safe, she placed the shed at 13 feet. Uh, Nancy and Tyler also used neighborhood area as a guide as to what they saw in the neighborhood as to what was permissible. Nancy and Tyler didn't realize they needed a permit for the shed, nor did they know that the county had changed the setback requirements overriding the covenants of the subdivision. The property was platted in 1980. The county changed the zoning and increased the setbacks. They also uh, changed it to an estate lot, even though it's only 0.71 acres, which seems a little bit more restrictive than it needed to be which also, to my understanding, uh, would enhance, uh, would the, the setbacks for a, a different zoning would be more favorable to Nancy. Uh, Nancy, like I said, had no idea that the setbacks were changed from 16 to 15 feet on the side yard and backyard, and from 25 to 35, as far as front yard is concerned. There are many auxiliary structures in the area that do not meet the setback requirements. Several are actually on the property lines with no setbacks. This is a small lot. There are a lot of underground utilities crisscrossing the property, and the south portion of the lot is low with limited auxiliary sites to put any additional structure. Um, the issue really here is the Union Valley setback. Nancy always considered the back of her house uh, to be a backyard, not a front yard. She has no access except through the subdivision. Um, and like I said, there are several auxiliary structures, some of which are on uh, the front road of Union Valley, playhouses, sheds, garages, etc. The shed really poses no aesthetic issues as it's behind a six foot tall fence, which conceals most of it. The shed is also 26 feet from the edge of the road and on an upward slope from the, from the road, which poses no road hazard. The only road hazard is the utility road or utility pole on the other side of the uh, fence. Like I said before, the shed was built like a pole building. It's on piers of concrete and really can't be moved. It was built off the ground and strong. Um, and uh, when I talked to Rebecca on Monday, I pointed out that moving the structure to another location, uh, other than the fact that it's really not movable, um, there are all kinds of utility and wetland and, and whatnot. And that's really, if I'm gonna put a garage there, that's the only place the shed really could probably be. Uh, I apologize that the shed looks a little bit on the two-tone side. The, the back side that you can't see is a dark, dark gray. We're changing it to a darker brown to match the new siding we put on, or we're putting on the house. Nancy built the shed in good faith with limited knowledge of the building rules and, and, but she did follow the, the covenants of the subdivision. Um, any questions? Any questions for the petitioner? 
Um, I don't have one for the petitioner, but I have one for Rebecca based on what Mr. Stevens just said. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, Rebecca, he said that uh, the county changed the setback requirements. And I wondered if you could speak to that. And then second, he says a shed can't be moved. You said it can be moved. Can, can you revisit that one also? Sure. Um, well, regarding North Union Valley Road, uh, part of the, the measurement there is coming from the fact that it's classified as a major collector. Um, and so based on that classification, the setback is 35 feet. Um, and I don't know exactly, uh, I, you know, I don't know when the covenants were written. Um, but anyway, that's where the 35 foot number is coming from. Um, and then regarding relocating the shed, agreed it wouldn't be convenient, um, but the, you know, what I took into consideration is the fact that this is kind of a, a self-made uh, difficulty, so to speak, um, and had they, you know, known to get a permit, we could have advised them not to place it where they had ultimately placed it. Um, and so, you know, there, there are other locations on the lot that could accommodate the shed. Um, again, with the understanding that it would be difficult to move it, but all the same, there are other ideal locations that wouldn't um, violate setback regulations. I, I, I disagree because the south portion, which is the only other place it could probably be, okay, that's a very wet area. This, this lot drains everything to the north. Thanks, Lon. So at the moment, we're just trying to make sure that the BZA members can ask staff questions, but we might come back to you if you have a little bit more you'd like to add, but that's helpful. Thanks. Any other questions for staff? I have a question for the petitioner, and that's, is the fence located on the property line? It's uh, several feet uh, on my property. Okay. Anyone have any questions for the petitioner? Juan, did you have something you wanted to clarify? Uh, other than the fact that this has got concrete piers, it's uh, anchored in the concrete. So it's not like you can just pull it like a sled, okay? You'd have to almost dismantle the whole darn thing. I don't know how you, how you move something that's on concrete piers. Somebody needs to explain that one to me. Thank you, sir. Uh, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Hey, uh, Rebecca, how big is this story shed? It's 10 feet by 16 feet. So it's 160 square feet? Correct. Yeah, I, just for clarification, this is more for anybody who's watching too. Any structure that's larger than 120 square feet or any structure that's on a permanent foundation such as concrete piers requires a building permit and as a part of the process requires a improvement location permit from the planning department. So it doesn't matter, you know, yeah, again, you need to, to uh, check with the building department. Don't just assume that it's permitted because it's a fairly small building. Because anything under over 120 square feet under the Monroe County ordinances require a building permit. Or if it's on a permanent foundation. Larry, I, I understand that. My wife. I, I, I'm not, this yeah. is not directed to you. This is yeah. directed <laughs> at anybody else who might be listening. Because yeah. Uh, we try to avoid people having to come in and get after the fact permits because uh, it's not just the fact that they're zoning. Sometimes these go into drainage easements. Uh, sometimes there are utilities present. Uh, there are a lot of other issues as well. And as, you're, as you said, there are also restricted covenants and it might be okay with zoning, uh, but it, it, somebody might violate a restricted covenant as well. So. That's the reason check with the planning department. We'll be glad to answer any questions uh, in regard to your projects. Um, I would also encourage your, your son-in-law to contact the building department before starting a tiny home as well. 
Well, he, he actually did that. Uh, well, he, he built it down in, uh, I think, it's Martin County, but. Okay, okay. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to get that out there. All right. So I, I see this as, I mean, I, you know, I look, 1980 i i would have thought i thought that shed was probably as nice as it looks i thought that shed might be a little bit older than just a few years because i know that subdivision is has been there for quite a while uh and i i i see that moving that shed as solidly as it may be built would probably be very destructive to it and if i look at the picture that parallels uh yeah thank you I mean, it doesn't look out of character for what I would expect in that neighborhood. Uh, and I, I think there's probably a lot of disturbance and a lot of damage that would occur to that structure if somebody tried to get underneath it, cut off the cut off the post from the concrete piers or anchors, and then try to move it around. And so I'm inclined to 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 permit the variance. Hey, would you like to make a based on the fact I think that the based on the fact that the the petitioner apparently did do their best diligence of what they thought they needed to do to put the structure by looking at the covenants and restrictions that that doesn't happen very very often so that's kind of where I'm going with it would you like to turn that into a motion Bernie I can try thank you You're on mute, Bernie. How about now? You're fine. Okay. In the matter of case number 2010-VAR-85, front yard setback design, this is a design standards variance for 5349 North Westfall Court. I move that we approve the variance based on findings of fact, staff report, and I do see that practical difficulties are met. I'll second. Hey, uh, the vote is on uh, petition number 2010-VR-85, Stevens variance from development standards from the front yard requirements under chapter 804. Uh, the motion is based upon a finding of practical difficulties uh, in regard to having to relocate the uh, storage structure. And again, the motion is to approve based upon the amended findings at tonight's meeting. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Uh, the variance is granted uh, from the front yard setback under Chapter 804 for this structure uh, And that, that and by a five to zero vote. Thank you. Thank you, Lon. You have a good evening. All right, you too. Okay, next up we have case number 2010 VAR 86. Uh, Ann? Thank you. So this is the uh, Rusnik minimum lot size variance of chapter 804 from chapter 804. Uh, so this property petition site is located in Bean Blossom Township. It's 1.57 acres and is zoned agricultural rural reserve. So the agricultural rural reserve zoning has a minimum requirement of 2.5 acres. So um, on the bottom right, I'm sorry, the petition site, it's located at 7424 West Chafin Chapel Road. So um, on the upper left, the petition site is highlighted in red. The parcels surrounding um, that are shown in green are properties that are under the minimum requirement for agricultural rural reserve. So the purpose of the variance is so that the petitioner is hoping to um, build a, construct a single family residence. 
So the property originally contained a mobile home uh, that was removed in 2020 due to tornado damage. Um, it does still contain a 15 foot, 1500 square foot pole barn and a 500, 540 square foot uh, lean to on the property report card, both of which are pre-existing non-conforming. They may be encroaching into a rear setback. So any change uh, to those structures might require further variances, but this at this, the minimum lot size is the minimum required in order to add a structure to the property. So the property, the comprehensive plan designates this area as rural residential. Uh, there is some slope on the site, but the petitioner is, um, has submitted a site plan which pretty much utilizes the original mobile home placement, uh, original mobile home location, uh, which is located within vulnerable area. So the photos, the aerial photos shown on the right, uh, the top one is from, I believe 2014. And the bottom is the current photo. So you can see the old location. Uh, Sorry, the original photo with the mobile home was 2017. So their site plan, pretty much the same area that they're proposing. Um, what else? So I counted up how many properties within the area. Okay, so there are more than 15 properties that are zoned ag or R that do not meet the minimum lot size within a quarter square mile of the petition site. So with that, staff did find that the practical, practical difficulties um, was found as there are other properties that are um, able to be used as a single family residence and are small. So staff is recommending approval of the variance based on the findings. So approval of the rear yard. Oh, that's wrong. The slide is wrong. So it's approval of the minimum lot size variance uh, requirement of chapter 804 from the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance subject to the findings of fact. Okay. Any questions for staff? Okay, seeing none. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Uh, they did pop up in the chat earlier and state that they were here. Would you like to speak petitioner? Uh, I'm here and willing to answer any questions you have, but I don't necessarily have anything to say. Okay, does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Nope. Is there anybody else here that would like to speak on the behalf of this petition? Anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Not seeing anyone, Mary Beth. Okay, we will entertain a motion. So the, the recommendation slide, uh, the variance petition number is correct. It is simply uh, just the type, the requirement that's being requested is different. So I'll make, I'll make the change when I repeat the motion. Thank you. Okay. Who would like to make a motion for me? I'll do a motion on um, case number 2010-VAR-86, Design Standards Variance, Chapter 804, Minimum Lot Size at 7424 West Chaffin Chapel Road. I move to approve the Design Standard Variance from the mid Minimum Lot Size Requirement of Chapter 804 on the findings of fact I'll second. Okay, the vote is on position number 2010-VR-86, uh, RUSEC, um, and then the last size variance from chapter 804. A vote, uh, the yes vote is a vote to approve the variance based upon the findings, uh, including a finding of practical difficulty in utilizing the lot. Again, the vote is for a minimum lot size variance from chapter 804. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Mosea? Yes. Rebecca Smarchuk? Yes. 
Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bart Clements? Yes. The vote is approved by a five to zero vote, or the variance is approved by a five to zero vote. Um, could I, oh, does, does everyone see the note in the chat that there is someone present who would like to speak against the next case? Okay. I see it. Okay, that's all. So I'm sorry to interrupt like that, but I thought I was afraid it was for the case we just heard, but it is for the next case. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, and on to that next case. That is case number 2010-VAR-87. Amy? Yeah, this is the Butler minimum lot size variance to chapter 804. It's a 0 0.69 acre lot in Richland Township, section 15, located at 4265 North Hart Street Road. Um, it's basically they're requesting a 720 square foot structure uh, and the minimum lot size for the ER zone is one acre and this has a 0.69 acre lot size. So this is the locations kind of um, located south and really surrounded by Ellettsville and um, is also bordered by West Dallas Lane, which is a private road. They have easement access to it, but not a driveway access to that part. And the zoning map shows that this is ER zoned and some agro reserve, and then of course surrounded by Hullettsville zoning. Comprehensive plan has this as a designated community surrounding Ellettsville. And then this is the, um, the condition slope map that was well, back there one step, we can skip that. Uh, we did do floodplain analysis and yeah, so the bottom, <laughs> we did do floodplain analysis. We wanted to confirm um, that where their structure was gonna be located is gonna be up and out of the floodplain. Next slide. So they did submit an engineered drawing from Deckard Land Surveying. The proposed building, I've highlighted that their first floor Elevation is, or their lowest floor elevation is going to be 714 elevation feet. And I also highlighted 710 because that um, it's kind of the maximum, like that aqua contour line there is right around where the floodplain hits based upon the um, DNR's floodplain analysis and regulatory assessment data. And so we were just wanting to confirm that base flood elevation level and then where the first floor was going to be. These are a couple of the site photos. This is North Hart Strait Road with the petitions um, house on the left and the lower. I'm standing across the street right on the bridge where that creek crossing is. And you, they've, it, it's like they've been cleaning up the property. There was a stop work order put on it because we were concerned that there was disturbance in the floodplain um, and just needed to kind of find out what permits were needed first. Uh, and then this is facing east with Dallas Road or that Dallas Lane private drive on, yep, yeah, right there. And the house on the left. And then that bottom picture showing the location. I, I believe it's gonna be located almost right where that brush pile is uh, once they get approval. And the structure is basically was almost an afterthought. They were issued a grant to, um, put solar, solar panel, panels up on the site. And so they were gonna have just some freestanding solar panels and decided to kind of combine it uh, with some storage underneath. And that will service the house there. And this is just an aerial of the site. Uh, the petitioner's letter is here um, that also describes that um, solar panel uh, project that he's got going on for this and that's why he's here and then the next, this is the whole um, survey that was submitted. And I did see the survey stakes while I was out there. So that was um, extremely helpful for staff with kind of establishing, um, you know, the floodplain um, requirements and that sort of thing for this area. So the recommended motion for 2010-VAR-87 is to approve the design standards variance for minimum lot size standard chapter 804 in the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance based on the findings of fact. Any questions? Any questions for Tammy? 
Is the petitioner here? Yes, I am. Let me swear you in, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth in nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. Uh, proceed. Uh, me? Uh, I yeah. pretty much, Tammy covered it fairly well. We're just looking to add some storage that'll actually double as a solar panel um, platform for us to be able to supply the house. Does anyone have any questions for the petitioner? Is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of the petition? I don't see anyone, Mary Beth. Anyone here that would like to speak against the petition? Yes, I would. Okay, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your full name, sir. Jake Connard, C-O-N-A-R-D. Thank you, proceed. My concern with uh, where the location of the garage is going to be is the water flow coming off of Dallas Lane and the property behind it. Where the plan is for the building to be, it's kind of dug out now. And in the previous rains that we've had, there is quite a bit of water that comes down off that hill. And I mean, I went down there and looked at it. I've, I've took care of this Dallas Lane for seven years now. I do all the maintenance to it. And that's what my concern is right now with the drainage coming off of it with that building being built there. Does anyone have any questions for? I do, one for Jake. Okay. What, uh, what do you mean when you said you took care of West Dallas Lane, you did all the maintenance? That being a private drive, the stone, I mean, with it washing out the rain, keeping the driveway up where we can actually drive up and down it. I live just two houses up from where this proposed building is going to be. And I take care of making sure the snow is removed on it, keep, keep the upkeep of it, basically, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Jake? Is there anyone else here that would like to speak against this petition? Okay, I don't see any. Am I allowed to defend uh, the site or is that necessary? Uh, Sorry, this was Rich Bettler. I was not there. Hi, that. Rich. Uh, yeah, it will generally after you speak, but uh, I don't see anyone that's in opposition, Mary Beth. Besides Jake. Okay. Uh, is it all right for Mr. Bettler to speak again? I'd like to hear what he has to say. Yes. William would like to hear what you have to say about the uh, Thank you. issue. Um, the drainage that uh, Jake is talking about does exist, but it is the, the house, the structure won't affect that. It's the lay of the land is the way it is. Um, the land actually falls down towards Hart Strait. And there's always been a problem of water gathering against the private road over there. Now, we, we may try to actually add a slight channeling there to make sure water doesn't gather against the house, which will end up uh, assisting Dallas Lane. But regardless of whether the structure is there, the drainage is going to be continue to be a problem on that lane. It's not really an object of, with shy of regrading re the entire property. Um, I know it's difficult to tell, but the high side is um, to the what would that be? The north um, west of the house itself. So it comes, all of the water comes down towards Dallas Lane and Hart Strait, if I'm making sense there. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Butler? Yeah, I've got it. This is Bernie. Uh, so will the 
Well, the roof line on the, first of all, is there another driveway going in? No, the no, building? there won't be. Okay. The, the building is strictly for storage. I, I've okay. got some larger toys to speak of that I'd like to put in there. So they're not so space. Con concrete floor block foundation, just a standard structure. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And then the setback from the right of way on Dallas, Rebecca, is, does that meet code? Oh, so sorry. Um, That's okay. Or Tammy, you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tammy. You were asking about the, the, the shed? The setback, yeah, the setback for the new building from Dallas is the 25, I think it's 25.7 or... So, yeah, it's shown at 25.7 and it's not... There's some, there was some debate in the office as to whether this was considered a local road that would require the 25 foot setback or if this was just an easement, a 20 foot ingress easement egress easement, in which case no setback would be required to stay out of the easement. So okay. um, which, which it's way, nice that they're staying back 25 feet. Okay, sorry to interrupt you, Tammy. Uh, yeah. uh, so which way, what, what's, what's the roof look like, Mr. Butler? Uh, the roof will uh, face, um, I guess that would be heart straight. The um, peak of the gables will be on the north and south sides. So it'll that, match. That way it'll, it'll match, match the house. house. Yes, and that way it gets the solar panels directed um, towards the um, southeast side. Okay, so the downspouts will will the building have gutters? Yes, and the downspouts will extend out to uh, the uh, east side. Sorry, it gets confusing. I know it's towards the Hart Strait Road, so that the water will flow around to that side and continue. So, in other words, the building won't stop the water. It'll just keep it going in the same direction. And the, the roof line won't shed water to the south onto Dallas. It'll shed water to the east. Correct. The downspouts to Hart, Hart Strait. Correct. Yes. <clears throat> That's why I say the structure shouldn't affect the water flow since we're not shedding excess water towards Dallas. It's shedding towards Hart Strait. All of the lay of the land and the, the roof line and the gutters will shed towards Hart Strait. And again, the, the you know, I, I'm just thinking out loud here, but the purpose to everybody, the, the way I say the purpose is all setbacks are being met, it appears, and then the purpose is because the lot size just doesn't meet what the zoning, the current zoning is. So that's why the, that's why we're talking about a variance tonight. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why we had the um, the elevation survey and everything else to make sure we met all other requirements of the city, state, county, um, basically so that we come into compliance. Um, and the obviously we're just the, the piles that are there just because we did have the stop work and we stopped. So we're just waiting. Well, I, I on an amend on on any motion if if this is a if there's a motion to approve, I would suggest that maybe we put in there that we that that the petitioner not direct gutter flow directly to the south, and that it it continue shedding to the east as it is now towards Hart Strait, because I don't see any additional watershed necessarily getting onto Dallas with the introduction of the building. Hey, would you like to go ahead and make a motion for us, Bernie? Yeah. Okay. Uh, matter of case number 2010-VAR-87, I move that we approve the design standards variance to the minimum lot size based on practical difficulties and staff's findings in the report. Uh, and I would offer one condition that water from the roof uh, be directed towards Hart Strait Road and the downspouts not be directed towards Dallas Avenue or Dallas Drive. I'll second. I will uh, call the. Uh, yeah. Something else? Okay. Uh, 
The vote is on uh, petition number 2010-VRC87. There's been a motion to approve the variance for the Bettler minimum lot size uh, from development standards variance from chapter 804, finding practical difficulties with the approval based upon the findings, subject to a condition that the gutters be directed, uh, the flow from the gutters be directed towards Hart Street and not towards the private road, uh, Dallas Lane. Uh, again, a vote in favor of the vote to approve uh, the variance with the conditions set forth in the motion. Uh, William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Kasmarczyk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Bernie Giratas? Yes. Uh, variance is approved by a 5 to 0 vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And next up, we have case number one. I don't know that one. 2011 VAR 88 and 2010 VAR 89. And Rebecca, this is for you. Thanks. Yes, this is a minimum First, lot size. I ask about the question case number. Is that? First case number correct, the 2011? Uh, yeah. Okay. The 11 sounds for being filed in November, just for clarification. Uh, okay. It is confusing, uh, but uh, it, it, the 2010 would be October, 2011 would Got be it. November. <laughs> All right, I understand that now. Thank you. And this is the 88th variance <laughs> of the year. <laughs> of the year. Okay, good to know that. Uh, so this is a lot size, uh, si lot size area and width uh, variance request for property located in Van Buren Township, Section 24. At the moment, it does not have an address, but it's located off of South Leonard Springs Road between uh, Fullerton Pike on the east and State Highway 45 on the west. Um, so the petitioner would like to construct a new 2,771 square foot house um, as, well as, as well as install septic. Um, the lot size at the moment is 1.2 acres, um, although 2.5 acres is required. And the lot width is currently 95 feet wide um, and a 200 foot wide um, is required, width is required in this zone. Uh, so it is a zoned agricultural rural reserve. Uh, the comprehensive plan has this designated as rural residential, uh, and there it, it are really no slopes. It's fairly flat lot, um, so no slope, no karst, uh, no floodway. Here we are looking at an aerial photo of the lot. Um, at the moment, you might realize that that's a above ground pool that kind of straddles um, across the property line there on the east. Um, that actually, that pool will actually be torn down. Um, and so, yeah, the lot is vacant. Here is uh, the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mr. Eric Deckard is representing um, the petitioner in this case. And uh, on the right is the site plan uh, that's been proposed. You can see the existing house where Jackie's cursor is hovering. Thank you. And then septic is planned for the back side or the south side of the lot. Um, uh, staff recommends approval of the design standards variance to the minimum lot size and width standards in Chapter 804 uh, based on findings of fact. Are there any questions? Any questions for Rebecca? One thing I do want to throw in real quickly is that uh, this lot was created back in the 
50s or the 1940s. Eric did a lot of extensive title work, work on this to figure out exactly when it was created. So it was created before there was a zoning ordinance, uh, just for everybody's reference. Uh, it is a separate legal lot of record and it's entitled uh, to receive a variance for the old students uh, granted by the BPA. Uh, is the petitioner here or is Eric here to speak on his behalf? Hello, everybody. This is Eric Deckard. Um, hey, Eric, any... can I throw you in real quick? Sure enough. You swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Eric. Continue. So, um, yes, yeah, staff did a very good job here outlining the conditions on this site. Of course, you can see that it, it doesn't meet the, the lot size or the minimum lot width. However, I believe that they can show that, that they can put a, a decent size structure on this lot without any difficulties. And if you guys have any questions that is, is particular to this site, we'd be glad to try to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Eric? Yeah, I've got a quick one. So again, this is just a Due to the lots, the parcel size, and you know setbacks and everything else are being met. Uh, yes, um, you know this this site can handle approximately a seventy foot wide structure with no difficulty with it burning. And what we've got proposed on there now, I believe, is fifty nine feet. Okay. I just add that you know these these lot size variances, a lot of them, not all of them, but if we get to a point where we have a hearing officer, a lot of these could be cleaned off the petition side with with them with a process such as that, maybe. I would agree. And if I can note too here, there are other parcels in the area that don't meet the required lot size or width. So this isn't the only one in the vicinity. Okay. Any more questions for Eric? Is there anyone else here that would like to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Anyone have a motion ready for me yet? Well, um, if no one else is uh, ready to make one, I'll go ahead and make it. In this regards, cases number 2011-VAR-88 and 2010-VAR-89 pertaining to des design standards uh, variances with regard to the minimum lot size and the minimum lot width. And I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve the design standard variances from the minimum lot size and minimum lot width requirements uh, based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway and Drainage Engineer reports. I'll second. Okay, the, there's been a motion to approve variance number 2011-VR-88-89. The variance is to approve both uh, motions, move both variances based upon the findings of fact. Uh, variance 88 from minimum lot size and variance 89 from minimum lot width, uh, both from Chapter 804. Uh, again, a vote in favor is a vote to approve both variances based upon the findings and a finding of practical difficulty. Very best to Smarchik. Yes. Would you sort it? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Marie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Okay. Uh, both variances are approved by a five to zero vote. Oh, Thank right. you, everyone. Thank you, sir. You have a good evening. I see Eric or talk to you. Whatever. Okay. I have a point of order, um, just, you know, I, I, the meetings meld together, but did we approve the minutes of the September 2nd meeting? 
Now, skip I'd right like, that. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of the September 2nd, 2020 meeting. Second. Okay. Uh, let me call the roll on the minutes. Uh, a vote in favor is vote to approve the minutes from September. Uh, Margaret Clements? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. William Hosea? Yes. Mary Beth Smarchuk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Um, uh, minutes are approved by a five to zero vote. Thank you all. Good to be back with you. Uh, what, hey, Larry, I sent you a uh, message in the chat. Could you uh, respond by email when you get a chance, please? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn. Yes. So I so move. All right. I'll second that motion. Hey, one thing before you leave, everyone, I, I want to thank you for your the BZA members for their service this year. It's been an incredibly strange and difficult year for any public body, but I think you guys and staff have done a remarkable job of adapting adapting to the Zoom environment and, and going through nearly 90 separate variance positions. And uh, Bernie, I think during the coming year, we'll work on that hearing officer uh, as a part of the ordinance update. Uh, uh, but again, I want to thank you all for your help. This is the last meeting of the year. And uh, other than that, thanks again and happy holidays. Hey, Larry, th this is my first year, so this is all normal to me. <laughs> Actually, you know, uh, wait a minute, it's gone really well. I mean, I think the, these Zoom meetings do really well. Uh, we've had good participation. Actually, people stay on and watch the meetings. So, so I think they've worked very well given the uh, condition. Uh, and it looks as well, though, we'll be doing these through January, the end of January, at a minimum. Uh, just as yeah. uh, a heads up. Well, the one thing I see from this, and not to drag on a conversation, but staff does a remarkable job with these petitions. And, you know, the way Jackie navigates the Zoom is remarkable. I would give up and just close the computer top down and say, let's do it by phone. So I really do think that they do a remarkable job. And, you know, we do not agree with the findings of staff. We understand why they make their recommendations and respect that a great deal, but it's because of their presentations that we can see all angles of the petitions and try to make it, in my opinion, make a judgment that serves the public and still serves the ordinances that we have to uphold. So excellent just, job, staff. Just one other thing, you may be seeing a more abbreviated report beginning in uh, January. Uh, we still intend to include all the essential information, uh, but not necessarily all the findings and, and other materials we have. Uh, we, it just becomes a burden for staff to prepare these long reports. And uh, for a lot of these positions, there's really no reason to go in that much detail. Uh, just basically set forth the facts, uh, a diagram and with the attached photos. Uh, we, still, we still will do site visits with photos, uh, but uh, you will, likely see a more abbreviated report for each of the positions coming into the new year. But again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.